Hi Trader, Tina once again from shortmetina.com with our daily recap. If this is your first time tuning in, if this is your very first time listening to one of our videos, do us a solid. Drop us a comment in the comment section. You can let us know your name. You can just say hi. You can tell us whether or not you agree with our analysis or my analysis. Uh, or you can just say, hey, my first time tuning in and let me know your thoughts on the video. If you are recurring and you you listen to us every single day or every other day or you tune in regularly, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. It means so much to us, to me in particular, that you come back time and time again. So as usual, we're going to kick it off with the overall market. We're going to start with the S&P 500. The SPY right now, what you're looking at is a daily chart dating back to 2017. But I just want to focus in on price action for the most part that occurred today, right? So we closed at 282.15. So a couple of important things happened today, or at least for me, one extremely important thing happened uh, it, within the markets today. Today we went as high as 284.36, right? 284.36. The last time we traded in the 284s or anywhere around there was back in mid-October when the sell-off initially started, right? So I thought, wow, that's great. Remember that level that I was paying attention to. Uh, for me, resistance comes in at around 280 to 282. And I said to myself, well, if we can not only just trade above that 280 to 282 resistance level, but if we can manage to hold, that would bode well for the bulls going forward. So when I was watching at market and price action today, and I saw that we were around uh, 283, right? We started off really strong in the morning, midday. We were at 283, and then I saw that we got to 284. I was like, wow. This is monumental, right? This is significant. We're going to close above that 282 to 2, uh, you know, 83 level, right? We're actually going to sustain this move, all right? Then fast forward towards the ending of the day, and then we started to sell off a little bit, right? Going as low is almost uh, in the high 281. So from the peak of 284.36, we kind of, we, we kind of, not kind of, we came down a lot and we closed, for me, barely by the skin of our teeth at 282.08. If you look here, we have confirming volume. Uh, so not a good close by any metrics in my opinion, but let's see follow through. Let's see what happens tomorrow. I'm going to be paying attention to obviously the open and the close uh, and today's low of 281.41. If we break that, then I think things might be tipping towards um, the bearish side. We're not there yet. Like that we made a move to 284 today. Very disappointed that we couldn't kind of seal that deal. We didn't close We didn't close above that resistance level of, uh, we can say, to, uh, again, Let's just say 283. How about that? All right. So resistance comes in one more time. Let me recap. Resistance comes in at around 280 to 282. We've penetrated those levels quite some, for quite some time. We've been trading within that range. We just haven't managed to like with any sort of um, with any um, for lack of a better word, if that's even a word, we haven't been able to kind of like maintain that with a close. Uh, so let's see what happens going into tomorrow. What else do we have? And then we have the IWM daily chart focusing on price action that occurred today, right? So similarly, started off really strong, went as high as 156.66, closed at 154.64, and the low of today is actually 154.57. So we closed like really right there by the low. And when that generally happens, there's usual follow through. So there might be actually a sell off tomorrow. Time will tell. Let's see what else do we have. And then we have ticker BPMX. Uh, I've been relatively bearish in the past on this particular ticker only because it's been hanging out for the most part around all time lows, right? All time lows, we can say clocks in at around uh, five cents. Uh, and for the past few weeks, the stock has been trading between let's say nine cents to 10 cents. However, these past two days with accompanying volume, right? Yesterday, I believe it traded uh, at about seven times above average volume today, clocked in at a whopping north of 15 times average volume. So you have a lot of new buyers stepping in. We're up uh, for the day, uh, a whopping 22%, right? North of 23%, closed at 14 cents, went as high as uh, 17 cents. So 
the move all in all for BPMX very strong. You can even see that it broke out of this short term resistance level here of around we can call that 12 cents dating back to mid January. Right, dating back to mid-January, so about three months, uh, the stock had a very hard time penetrating that 12 cents level. Today we did it uh, with a lot of volume pouring in and we managed to close above that 12 cents mark. Now, for the remainder of the week going into next week, this is very telling, right? Uh, for ticker BPMX, we want it, or you want it if you're long, to sustain that move. So if you know you wake up tomorrow or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you see that the stock uh, continues to decline or is not is in a decline, that's not going to be positive. You want it to remain above this breakout base here of 12 cents. If it dips to like 11 cents, that's okay, but it can't do that on volume. So what you should be paying attention to going forward if you are long is that 12 cents mark. You want to ensure that the stock is, for the most part, trading above there. And if there is a sell-off at some point because the close, granted the day was strong, but the close wasn't that strong in my opinion. Uh, so you want to make sure again going forward. I'm, uh, and I'm, I'm rambling somewhat. So let's kind of wrap it up. Great move, right? With confirming volume, you always want to see buyers step in. Broke out of we can call that three months resistance of twelve cents. Managed to stay above that, right? Because the close is at fourteen cents. So going into tomorrow, the remainder of the week, you want to ensure that it re remains above this breakout base here. If you can do that, even if you have like a slight sell-off, you just want to ensure that the volume of the sell-off is not comparable to what you're seeing here with the buying, right? So if if it has a sell-off and you have like minimal volume, like you see here. That's perfectly fine. Uh, you just don't want there to be like complete like unloading. Uh, so, so far for BPMX the last two days, in my opinion, a uh, relatively bullish price action. What else do we have? All right, we're gonna keep rolling with our, our analysis of mankind. So up about 4.5%, uh, 4.6% uh, rather, on the day close to 225. So I've done a few videos on mankind. If you're interested, just go back and click on, let's say the last three or four videos I've done, you'll hear my detailed opinion on it. So long story short, it's been acting bullish since bottoming out here back in December, Bre breaking through uh, a, a few, in my opinion, uh, key levels, in particular resistance here of two, dating back to uh, September of 2018. We really haven't seen too much trading activities above that $2 mark. So we were able to break that with, um, I wouldn't say above average volume, but on volume and for the past uh, five or so trading days, the stock has remained above two. So very bullish in my opinion. So pay attention to the most recent high of 230. If we take that out, then I think uh, there's strength or more strength behind this particular move. And I would not be surprised to see the stock trading at around uh, 250. The only thing that really concerns me, if it's a concern at all, is the lack of volume. If we had some volume pouring in, uh, then definitely $3 will not be out the cards. But keep mankind on your watch list. It's been acting bullish, in my opinion, for the past couple of weeks. What else do we have? All right, and then we have FedEx, ticker FDX daily chart. Let's just zoom in right now on what's going on here. We closed at 181.41. Uh, company reported earnings were off something like uh, north of 6%. I see a quote here of 172. So what I would be paying attention to would be this most recent low of 167.61. If you don't get a bounce there, expect further decline. And, and you shouldn't be surprised to see FedEx uh, trading at around 150 within the upcoming weeks. Uh, I would say later today and tomorrow should be telling in terms of if this sell-off will accelerate. Um, right now it's looking like a prime short candidate in my book. What else? And then we have ticker AMD daily chart. Let's just zoom in on price action dating back to January of 2019. For the past three months, the stock has traded within a range. We can call the lower end of that range $21.00. The upper end of that range, we can call that 25.50. Today, not only did we break out of that three month range, going as high as 26.08, but we've managed to close above that range, uh, closing at 26.08. So, with confirming volume here, very bullish price action for ticker AMD today, closed at 26.08 again, broke out of that three month range, we closed 
at the high. So going into tomorrow, even if it pulls back a little bit, let's say it pulls back to around 2550, that's fine. If it can sustain, it's not even about making the move, right? It's I always talk about sustainability. It's about sustaining that move. So it, if it can sustain that move, right, and we can trade above, let's say $25 uh, tomorrow and for the remainder of the week, the next month, etc., then AMD might be ready for its second win again. Look at volume pouring in here. Uh, bullish in my opinion. What else? And then we have ticker SHMP daily chart. Uh, let's just focus in on price action dating back to mid-February. So about four weeks worth of price action. So the stock for the most part has managed to remain above support. We can call support around 22 cents with the exception of yesterday and today, right? So yesterday you had that huge move to the downside. We broke through support of 22 cents went as low as 19 cents, right? So today, similar story, we had that follow through. Stock went as low as 17 cents. However, it rebounded on decent volume to close at 21 cents, right? So we have that push. So going, we actually even went as high as 22, but we didn't quite close there. So going into tomorrow, for things to get back on track for ticker SHMP, you definitely want it to get back above 22 cents and hold. If it can't do that, expect more downside. So if you're long, you want this to get back above 22. What else? And then we have ticker AVGR daily chart dating back to October of 2018. But let's focus in on price action once again, once the stock broke out back in mid-February, right? Stock went from a low of around uh, 40 cents to a high most recently of a dollar and 10 cents. Uh, today, a bit of indecision, right? Look at the candle doji, closed at 103. Let's see if there's going to be follow through. So what you should be paying attention to if you're on the long side is today's low of around uh, 98 cents and today's high of 107. Crucial, crucial. If we dip below 98 cents or if the stock gravitates more towards 98 cents, chances are you're going to have that break and things might get out of control relatively quickly. If, however, not only do you penetrate today's high of 107, but also surpass tomorrow's high of 110, then I would say that that's bullish price action and I would not be surprised to see this gap here filled at around a dollar and fourteen cents, possibly even going as high as a dollar and ten cents. So, from a risk war perspective, I'm not sure if it's worth it. That's up to you. Uh, but again, pay attention to today's low ninety eight cents, today's high of one oh seven going into tomorrow. It looks like a reversal it might be uh, underway, but again, follow through is super important when you see this particular candlestick, which is a doji. What else? And then we have ticker BIOS daily chart. Let's just focus in on the last two days worth of price action. Complete and total selling for the past two days. Today, however, fared a little bit differently. Closed at 241, up north of 3% on the day. On, you know, it's on okay volume, right? So for me, what I would be paying attention to if I'm on the long side is obviously the low formed within the past three days. We can say that clock's in at around uh, $2.30, right? If the stock can remain above that $2.30 mark, then you actually have a chance for it to bounce at minimum to around uh, 250 260 if it cannot hold 230, then I would expect uh, more selling. Let's see what tomorrow and the remainder of the week holds, particular BIOS, BIOS, what else? And let's round it out with Tilray, ticker TLRY. Daily charts since the stock IPO'd. I haven't done an analysis on ticker TLRY in quite some time. Uh, however, I have been Let's just say, I wouldn't say, I don't want to say that I'm bearish because I am in the intermediate and longer term. I am bullish on the entire marijuana space. However, with this particular ticker, I believed uh, at some point it's going to revisit this breakout base here of around, uh, we can say 35 to $36. I know that seems like such a far uh, way considering today's close was at 69.79, but let's pay attention obviously for the remainder uh, of the trading quarter this week for the remainder of the month. Let's pay attention to support that has held dating back to December. So around four months of trading activity, four months of support, Tilray has managed to trade above that, we can call that, what do you want to call it? We can say that 63.64 level. If it breaks, right, so I'm paying attention obviously to a couple of things. One, support. If that breaks, 
I think things will spiral really quickly for this particular stock because there's really no support in my opinion outside of uh, 64. If that breaks, then there's no real support on the way down. So I'm still expecting Tilray at some point, if not mid 30s, uh, at least low 40s. So I still think that there is a lot more room of downside for this particular ticker. So I wouldn't be jumping in here, uh, although I'm sure for a lot, it looks tempting sitting at 69.79. Let things play out. A lot of these pot stocks, in my opinion, will eventually come back down to decent prices to get in. So you don't want to chase, you don't want to rush. We're going to cap it there. Tina once again from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any of these videos, I would like for you to do three things for me. One, comment. Again, if this is, if this is your first time tuning in, just say hello, drop a comment. Let me know whether or not you disagree. If you're recurring, do the same thing. Drop a comment, let me know if you agree or disagree. Uh, two, if you like the video, then ensure to head on over to our YouTube channel at Short Me Tina, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. I do videos Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Whenever the stock market is open, you can expect a video analysis similar to the one that you're seeing here. So if you don't wanna miss them uh, or wanna be notified right away when I upload it, definitely head on over to our channel, Short Me Tina, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. And lastly, I've been in the stock market for uh, north of two decades, definitely closer to 17 years. And so if you wanna find out just my observation for the past uh, 16 or 17 years, uh, definitely head on over to shortmetina.com. Sign up, become a member. Thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for the support. Thank you.